Oh hey, it's Rob. And today I'm taking a look at the Atli Eon time-lapse camera. This is the starter kit, the black version. Uh, I think this is called Atli. Might be Atli. Might be Atli. Might be Herman Herman for all I know, but I'm calling it Atli. Uh, this is taking a look at it right out of the box. We're actually still in the box at this point. Okay. Box in box. Now the Otley Eon is a time-lapse camera. Uh, I have other cameras that can do time-lapse, but this one is specially dedicated to be able to do long-term time-lapse stuff. I mean, I've tried setting up uh, like GoPro to be able to do it and other cameras to be able to do it. And as much as that works, it, they generally have a very short life and I don't get that much time. So what do we have? We have the camera itself. Comes with an SD card. Uh, let's see, this is a 16, 16 gig. SD card, mini or micro SD. Uh, first impressions, this is a very plastic camera. Um, seems like there is probably focus or something. Yeah, that looks, uh, that's a focus knob. Uh, USB-C port, looks like possibly a microphone port and I'm guessing a start-stop button. There is a little... Aha! There we go. There's a battery container here. Uh, Alright, we're going to assume that there might be batteries in here somewhere. So, let us take that out. A rather nice little snooted UV filter. Um, I'm guessing that just goes right over. Yeah, it's just a rubber rubber piece that fits right over. There is a plastic tab on there that you want to take off. I don't know if you can see it. It says UV filter, and it's got this little doohickey there. But, oh, nice sunshade. That's actually a nice touch. Uh, do, do, do. I think it says pull here. I pulled there. And... Right. <laughs> um, little plastic pieces are sticking to me. Um, this looks like it might possibly be documentation and directions. This looks very much like a battery. Um, 2050 milliamp hours. 3.7 volts. It's a lithium ion battery pack. Now this does look like it is um, proprietary. I don't know of any other batteries that look like this, uh, which is a little unfortunate, but let's see what else there is. Oh, neat, a rubber case. That's quite nice. A little water, uh, well, weather resistant case. Um, a mount of some sort with sticky stuff. I'm guessing this is a shock mount, but I am not entirely sure. And a little ah, goodness, a little tripod. You know, it's pretty standard. It's got the you know the little ball head. Again, it is very plastic. Um, 
this does rotate and then when you lock it down it stops rotate well it doesn't entirely stop rotating it unscrews I see okay so this is a uh, two-part looks like standard quarter 20 uh, so you could put this on another tripod or as I often like to do um, I use uh, lamp mounts a lot, light mounts that have a quarter inch stud on them. Okay, so this is what comes in the box. Let's take a look at the instruction directions. So there's a quick use guide and another which I'm assuming is a quick use guide not in English a couple of nifty little stickers everybody keeps putting stickers in packages now I don't know if it's just a marketing thing or if it's a new sort of fad or what but I'm going to take a look through this quick and come right back at you as it turns out, this uh, surrounding plasticky stuff has nothing to do with this. This is an extension adapter for when you put on this silicone housing so that it will stick through here so that you can mount the camera to a tripod. So that's really all this is, which is, it's nice of them to include that. There is an app, which I have not downloaded yet. Uh, registration for the camera that has the serial number and things for the particular camera. So I am going to put this together now. First things first, we're going to install the battery. The battery goes in only one way. And there we go. That was easy. Now as much as this is a plastic case it does feel pretty decently beefy um, I'm not going to complain about it I just I do like you know with lenses I tend to like metal this just makes me feel a little bit little bit squishy on how the quality of this is going to be however do not judge a book by its cover or a camera by its case the next step is to install the camera in this silicone case. Uh, apparently, we just do this by sliding the camera in. <laughs> yeah. It's like trying to put socks on the feet of a toddler. Little tiny plastic toddler. Come on. Come on. And then just for the heck of it, we will install the screw. Actually, that wasn't bad. Uh, USB-C port and what I'm thinking is the microphone port, although I'm Kind of curious for a time lapse camera to have a microphone. That's a uh, that's an interesting 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 thing. Is it number two? Ah, okay. It is not a microphone input. This is an external flash interface. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, it looks like well, I don't know what kind of plug that is. That. I think that's a special plug that goes to a flash unit. That's probably standard on a lot of flash units. I haven't had a flash unit for quite some time now. My still photography days are are pretty far behind. Um, next thing is we'll pull off the little filter tab.
Here we go. The uh, this thing that works as a lens hood is actually quite nice. Um, I mean, you can peel it back to where it's not in the way, or you can adjust it a couple of different levels. Um, I've had ones like this before. Um, it can be quite nice. It's not the same as a matte box or anything like that, but uh, next thing we'll do is screw on the tripod. Cute. Okay, honestly I have to say that the, with this silicone outer sleeve, this looks like it uh, could handle some pretty decent pretty decent weather. I suppose you know it's designed to be set up outside or in places where the weather might be inclement for a little bit of time. I'm sure you know it's not not going to be waterproof or anything, but uh, you know it will certainly probably withstand the light drizzle or hanging out in the snow. I don't know how this will how well this will do in outdoor weather, but I guess we could find out, huh? All right, so one thing I noticed is there's a little LED down here that uh, I've seen two colors on this. One is the yellow color when it is powered on. Uh, it also seems to be doing that with the charging cable. I've also seen it go red, uh, which is supposed to be the charging indicator, but for some reason it is not lighting up as such. Um... Oh, there it is. Yeah, it just changed red. Okay, so it is now charging. So we're going to let this sit on the charger for a while and charge up, like I said. So this is the QR code for the Atli Cam uh, application. And when I tried downloading it from the QR code, I got to a page that had an install button and I couldn't get it to install. However, it is available on the Play Store as A-T-L-I, Otley Cam. Uh, so I am installing that now. And, uh, well, in the process of running it, you have to pair the camera. And uh, I want to wait for the camera to charge. So that's holding on to it for now. There is also this nice uh, list of LED colors that will tell you what the individual colors mean. Um, uh, there is a firmware upgrade that has to happen, so in order to do the firmware upgrade I have to connect the camera as well, but that is the first thing that you do uh, right in the downloading of the app is to download the firmware upgrade. So, um, so far this this setup is going tremendously well. I mean this has been one of the smoother setups I've seen for a new thing out of the box. It took a couple of hours to charge the battery up. Um, but it is fully charged now and we're going to use the application that I downloaded off of the Play Store. To add a camera. We have the battery inserted Wait about 30 seconds for the status LED to change from orange to green. I'm going to pull the uh, lens cover off just to make it easier to see. There we go. It has changed to green. I'm hit the next button. Scan the QR code. And it then connects via Wi-Fi to the camera. Oh, and look, we have uh, we have the image of the camera. And just playing with the manual focus here. 
Neat. Okay. That's even better. You can get an idea of the camera image. It's a little delayed, but you know, I would expect that. But cool. What is what are these things? How oh, interesting. HDR. All right. And there is a tutorial in the software. How to make a time slice. To make a time slice, photo sequences are required. Please go to the setting and set the output to video plus photo sequence before shooting a time lapse video. How to connect the camera. Doesn't know the power button. Wait until approximately 30 seconds. Orange to green. Okay. Well, we've already connected it, so I think that's quite okay. But that is actually kind of a nice, uh, nice pairing. So now, all right. can have multiple cameras. <clears throat> okay, after playing around with the application a little bit, uh, to open up the camera, um, if you go to this white button down at the bottom, it brings up this menu to where you can set up the interval. Right now it's set for four seconds, so if I set this to one minute. Uh, and then we'll shoot for one hour. And now it is doing the recording. So you can tell it's got the nice little black, or <laughs> black, yeah, nice little red square at the bottom which shows that it's actually doing the recording. Nice little uh, uh, countdown timer. So I think we'll. I just moved the camera to have it a little bit uh, pointed toward the, the dogs and generally the floor uh, of the office. And there you can kind of see where I hold this. You can see the, uh, the dogs on the floor. And of course when I get up, I will be... <laughs> I will have the dogs following me everywhere, so you know, the dogs will disappear in and out. I don't have anything really good to uh, take time lapse of right now. It's it's dark outside. It's also really cold. It's like more than 20 below, headed toward 30 below tonight. So the joy is palpable. I will have to uh, get some time lapse footage and put something together to show you what kind of stuff I can get from this because I am really intrigued by how long this will run just by itself um, and what kind of quality the images are going to be. All right, a couple things. Uh, I have talked with the folks at Atli, and it is Atli, uh, which is it's good to know. <clears throat> I asked them about getting additional battery packs, and their response was, while they do have additional battery packs, uh, another solution would be to use the USB-C cable and a battery bank to power it for longer periods of time, which I didn't even think about at the time. So that makes a lot of sense <clears throat> if you're going to be uh, shooting long periods of time lapse. You know, so a 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank is going to last you a good chunk of time. I don't know how long this battery will last running the camera. Um, I don't know that I want to uh, push it that hard to find out this quick. But um, 
folks at Atlee have been very nice, incredibly responsive, and I have to say, uh, the application seems to be working pretty well. I there, the tutorials that they have in the application are a little, a little on the light side, but uh, honestly, it's not that difficult to figure out if you're used to any other kind of photo application you're pretty much going to be in the same ballpark uh, there are some interesting features that I want to explore more there is an HDR setting and a few other I think you can turn the image uh, you know whether it's going to be upside down or right side up you can set it looks like you can set that up in inside the application you can also write both the video file and individual pictures. So, for instance, if you want to do something that's uh, a little bit higher resolution, uh, you can. Most editing applications will take in a series of images and use that as a video, or you can find a way to put a sequence of images and create video from that. So. <clears throat> Happy? Yes. Uh, I am quite happy with this so far. The quality seems to be pretty decent. The, the camera's a little bit on the plasticky side, but I don't think that's a serious issue considering what I'm going to be using it for. And overall, the application seems to be pretty good. I mean, there are very few issues uh, getting this up. The only, the only real one was when I tried to download it, the application from within the booklet. I couldn't get it to go, but you know, it was on the Play Store. And I did notify them of this, so they are checking on that now. Um, in the meantime, I'll have to collect some footage and <laughs> toss it in here and we'll have an idea of what that looks like. So, hey, it's Rob, and it's about 12 below, something like that, up in Bemidji. And uh, I'm going to set up the Atli Eon and try and do a time lapse of uh, getting rid of some snow that's here because I really wanted to get rid of it. I've wanted to get rid of it for a few days now, but um, it's been cold. Thing is, it's going to get colder. It's supposed to get down to almost 40 below tonight. So I want to try and get this cleaned out as much as possible before it gets too cold. And then uh, we can go from there. But I want to try and set this up. All right, first thing we do is we turn it on by holding the power button until the little LED comes on. Now, something I noticed is that it comes on yellow for quite some time before it uh, changes to green where it starts recording. I'm guessing that this is sort of a boot up sequence. This has probably got a not very high power processor in it. Uh, largely because it wants to do uh, conservation of battery. So we'll keep this over here. Okay, it's turned green. I'm going to set it up over here for now. At least I think I am because with dogs that's going to be very interesting. Uh, of course, to operate the camera, you have to have the application installed. And I do, whoops, monthly cam, connecting with the camera. Ah, uh, yes, it is cold. This is, uh, not all that pleasant when it is cold, but okay, fine. So we click to proceed. I get to landscape mode. Where are we? There we are. So the first thing I want to do is adjust the focus. This is pretty uh, pretty out of focus. That's pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that. 
Uh, it is a little difficult because the only way to really check your focus is to look on your phone, and that's probably not the best way to get uh, the shortest focus. But uh, interval, let's go with every 1.5 seconds, and then we'll start. It is recording, and going from there. So, we'll see what it looks like. Non-denominational digital voice assistant, what is the weather like in Bemidji? In Bemidji, there's a wind chill warning in effect until Sunday, January 2nd, 10 a.m. The current weather is minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly sunny skies. Today, you can expect cold temperatures with a high of minus 10 degrees and a low of minus 39 degrees. First impressions. Uh, I like the camera. I like what it does. I like the ability to set it up as a time-lapse camera and just forget about it. Um, it is, I can keep the other cameras for their own special purposes and have much better, uh, much better luck doing it. Now, there are some cons. Uh, the image is, it's really difficult to focus. Um, Trying to get focus on this camera while you're looking at it with your phone. I suppose you, I mean, if you have a, a tablet or something like that, you could probably do it as well. But uh, it's just, it's really difficult with a phone to try and get good focus on it. It is also a 1080p camera. I mean, it is a smaller image sensor than the other cameras that I have. So the image quality is not quite as sharp as some of the other cameras. But honestly, for the kind of stuff that I'm doing, I mean, I shoot YouTube videos, it's, it's plenty. Um, if you have good light and it's, it's just fine. Um, if the AB comparison that was in that last one, you can see a little bit of the, the quality difference between the two. Again, this is not a professional level camera. Um, if you're doing that kind of stuff, there are, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that you can put into time-lapse equipment. And, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? This is not intended to be used in a high production environment. It is plastic. Uh, it's not going to withstand a lot of banging around, but at the same price, the price point is such that I don't want to say disposable, but it's the kind of thing where if you, manage if you manage to kill it off in something it's not a huge loss uh, price point is really attractive um, the application has some neat features that I haven't gone into um, there are there are a number of different things that I want to explore very much uh, I couldn't find anything directly on how to use the application uh, so that's something that, I don't know, maybe I, that could be me just not looking far enough and most likely is. Um, but there's nothing in the package directly that has, you know, like a, a guide for uh, more instructions on what they are. There is a tutorial built into the application that will get you through most stuff. Uh, one important note, if you are using this and you are recording something and you turn the camera off, 
while you're recording, that recording is lost. It's going to be corrupted. Nothing you can do to get it back. Now, if you are shooting a still sequence at the same time, so you're outputting both video and still, all the still images will be there. And that's what I ended up doing on this uh, little short video. Uh, I managed to corrupt the playback file, but I still had all the still images and got them imported just fine. So, um, do I like it? Yes. Unqualified, yes. Um, for what it is, it's a really nice camera. <sighs> am I going to use it? Yes. I am going to use it more. Probably not a lot this winter. Uh, the stuff that I'm doing, well, I don't know. The stuff that I'm doing ends up being, is being really tedious and not very interesting. I mean, right now I'm going through a lot of papers. <laughs> And if there's one thing that makes going through papers more exciting, it's time-lapse. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, I would say if you're in the market for a time-lapse camera, this is a good one to go with. So, all right. See you guys next time.